Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now in the morning I kind of check the tech news, see what's going on and most mornings life is just pretty ordinary, just things keep on going on as normal. And once in a while there's a kind of a shock announcement. For example, a few months ago Intel joined the Risk Five Foundation. I did a video about that here on this channel. And now when I've read the morning news, I see that NVIDIA has released an open source driver for its GPUs for Linux. Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, there's quite a lot of history between the GPU makers uh, and the Linux community, not only NVIDIA, but also AMD uh, and Intel. And when talking specifically about uh, NVIDIA, there was this moment about a decade ago where in a question and answer session, uh, someone asked a question about NVIDIA support in Linux and Linus Torvalds himself had some choice words uh, to say about uh, NVIDIA. And NVIDIA has been the single worst company we've ever dealt with. So NVIDIA. Now since then things have changed and got better in many, many ways. And today there are two different types of drivers available for Linux. First of all, there's a driver from NVIDIA itself. That's a proprietary driver, not open source. You basically get the binaries from NVIDIA, you download them and run them on your desktop. And the truth is that's also what happens uh, on Windows. Now there are some issues around that to do with whether you can have a system running with secure boot and so on. So basically uh, sort of the open source purists say well we really want to have an open source driver and not just rely on this binary that we get from from NVIDIA. Now there's also an open source driver that is called uh, Nuvu and that is available and that does basically everything you need kind of a lot of the 3D stuff uh, but there are some features missing, uh, including, for example, using uh, dual monitors or G-Sync. And the real big problem is the performance. You can't tweak the performance parameters of the GPU using the open source uh, driver. It's called reclocking. And basically that means that you don't get the same performance out of the open source version compared to the proprietary one. But that has all now changed. NVIDIA has released an open source driver for Linux, starting with release 15.15, and that's the same as the kind of numbers, version numbers you're getting over on the Windows side. You now have a full open source driver available from NVIDIA. Now, for the moment, that's available for the Turing and Ampere based cards. That means if you want to use older cards, then you have to stick to either the proprietary driver from NVIDIA or the open source one this new driver is for those two architectures and then hopper and any other ones that come after this it's also worth mentioning this will be released under a dual license so it's gpl and uh, the mit and that's so that parts that have to touch the linux kernel come in direct contact with it can be released under the gpl so there's going to be no question on whether there's any kind of mixing of licenses that are compatible uh, they've taken a good approach to that so that the kernel stuff can remain pure for those open source purists out there now this version that comes out today is production ready for people that are using GPUs in the data center. So that may mean you're doing machine learning stuff on it for those that are doing streaming of gaming and so on. So for Turing and Ampere in the production in the server area, this is ready. It's considered alpha quality for people using it for uh, the desktop. So the GeForce cards are considered alpha quality. However, if you do use them, you will get access to multi-monitor display, reclocking, G-Sync, and you will also have access to uh, RTX, uh, ray tracing, and so on. So this is a full proper driver, but at the moment it's not actually the, f the best quality for the uh, desktop environment. So this driver is available for 64-bit x86, that's from Intel and from AMD, and also for ARM 64-bits. Now we have a full open source driver that supports the majority of operating systems. And of course, NVIDIA also very keen on ARM stuff. Uh, looking at the Jetson Nano and the Jetson modules, for example, I've just done a review here on this channel of the Jetson Orion. Of course, that's all ARM based and yet with the high end GPUs included inside of them. In the future, we are going to see more work done. Maybe there's going to be the merging between the current open source 
driver and the NVIDIA one and to see whether they kind of get this new kind of combined driver that can do both things. Because all the technology you need, for example, for reclocking uh, is available now in that open source driver and the existing people can have a look at it. Now, there's one minor problem and that is that the way the code is released at the moment is not ready for just integrating directly into the Linux kernel. It's not, you can't upstream it into the Linux kernel. So there's going to be some work going on in the background to either take this current driver and supplement it with what's available or work with NVIDIA so that ultimately there will be an upstreamed version that kind of builds by default into the Linux kernel. But that isn't available today. So the bottom line is that in the future, we're going to have much better support for graphics cards like the 20 series and the 30 series of the RTX 2060, the RTX 3060, and any new cards that come after that, we're going to have that directly available from NVIDIA as an open source driver. And NVIDIA are committing to the fact that this is going to be their main way now of supporting Linux. So they're not going to be producing the proprietary driver more and more for Linux and then have it. this is now their main way. And that's really great news because now it really means that at the end of the day maybe towards the end of this year the out-of-box experience for AMD and for Nvidia and for Intel graphics is going to be the same across the board which hopefully means that you can now be able to install Linux or on a desktop regardless of the GPU that you've chosen and get good support for every single type of graphics card that is in the mainstream. So in summary, a big change of heart from NVIDIA as they are now supporting open source. It's for Turing and Ampere GPUs onwards, that's the 20 series and the 30 series. It's gonna be NVIDIA's main way of releasing drivers for Linux going forward. Not any actual big changes available today. However, we're gonna see uh, people like Red Hat, so you're also looking at Fedora, uh, and you're looking at Ubuntu, Canical, and all those people, uh, SUSE, they're all gonna be supporting NVIDIA's uh, graphics driver out of the box, and they're gonna be rolling those into their distributions. And as more and more this gets mature, as it's more and more it's integrated by the Linux community, we're gonna see a better out-of-box experience uh, for every type of device, uh, laptop and desktop that is currently available. And then in the future, with new GPUs like Hopper, for example, uh, NVIDIA are committing to releasing Linux drivers for that. Okay, that's about it. So a great change of direction, a great change of heart by NVIDIA and one that is welcome by all of the Linux community. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, well, just hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video. Also, don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the email. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.